Lately, side pipes seem to be an issue. People wanting original side pipes. Just to give you a feel, uh, the off-road exhaust system for 1963, there was none delivered. Of all the cars made, all 22,000 of them in 64, the off-road exhaust system consisted of 1,900 cars. In 1965, uh, we were offered the side mount exhaust system. Of the 23,500 cars, 700 of them got it. In 1966, of the 27,000 cars made, 3,600 got it. And in 1967, the one we're looking at now, of the 22,000 cars, only 4,200 got side exhaust. We're going to let Jack and Greg explain how to exactly tell whether or not you have a side exhaust car or not. But do suffice it to say, there is quite a few of them out there where it was added, and that's not a bad thing. These were added, and it looks just like the original. Away for Jack and Greg. Now we're on the other side of the car with uh, Jack Stanford. And Jack's going to explain what is the dif difference between an original side exhaust Corvette and not. How can you tell the difference? Well, some people, it, that's important. But most side exhausts have been added after uh, they were uh, purchased uh, new. So Jack, you want to talk about the, sure. in, the tabs? And in 1966, there was roughly 3,600 cars that came factory equipped with side exhaust. And this is one of them. And what you'll see with the side exhaust cars from the factory is they have these notches that are below every screw hole for the side exhaust cover. Um, the, the cars that had under car exhaust actually had tabs that were that came down it, it, uh, like this and then the rocker panel screwed to those tabs so when you're retrofitting uh, under car exhaust with side exhaust you cut the tabs off so when you remove the cover on those cars you can actually still see the tabs where they've been cut this one obviously has no tabs and it has the notches therefore meaning this car was originally equipped with the side exhaust also up here, there's a ground strap, which is a lot of times not on the cars um, without them. Um, and then also the dust shield, which is gonna be hard to see. There's actually a, a closeout panel up under here. Um, I'll get up in here, right in this area. I don't know if you can see me in here. Um, it's right here. And there's a rubber weather stripping piece on the undercar exhaust. With the side exhaust being in close proximity, they did not put that rubber on these cars. Um, also, if you go back to the cross member here, there would be a ground strap that grounds the exhaust to the frame. That This hole would be threaded where this one is not. And then in the back, there's also something else that we could point out, but it, it, it won't really show up on camera. But there's a hanger up in this area it uses these two holes and so the hanger has a nut on the inside and on that nut there was a lock washer the lock washer as it tightens into the frame is going to leave an indentation um, where it actually started to bite into the frame so if you stick your finger up in here you could feel the burr this car obviously since it never had undercar exhaust does not have that burr wow jack that that's uh that's a lot of information and for those who have always wondered how can I tell if my side exhaust uh, is real or not or came originally with the factory that's some very good information while you're underneath the car could you show sure. the date uh, the uh, stamping on the end uh, excuse me transmission and and point that if out if you look right up in this area here where the light is you'll see the stamping and that is going to be the year model and then also the last six of the VIN number. And this number matches the car's VIN number. So that states that this transmission is matching numbers. We um, all know that uh, years ago when this matching numbers was not even talked about, back in the 70s when these cars were about 10 years old and stuff like that, somebody had a problem with the transmission. It wasn't uncommon to just go buy one and swap it out or buy a used one that was rebuilt and swap them out so Correct. it's nice to see that uh, the original transmission uh, survived with this car as well as uh, 
and it's, other components. You want we'll the, rear the rear end? end you want to talk well. about the rear end? Yeah, there's a date code on the bottom of the rear end, which is going to be very, very difficult for you to read. Um, most of it is gone. It's not a very good location uh, for preserving the numbers. Um, but if you look right there, you can see the 65. So that tells us that this car, or that rear end, was assembled and built in 1965, which very well could be the one that came in this car. There is not a VIN number on the rear differential linking it directly to this car, but you know if the date matches, then you, you pretty much assume that that could be the original one. Now, Patrick, you've gone over this car. How many times have you replaced what is an important uh, component is the half shafts. That's, that's half shafts are the support that uh, keeps the, the wheels aligned and et cetera. That's a, that's a big job, isn't it, usually it to is cut those things job. out. And, mm -hmm. and you can see in the condition of this one that it's, uh, they're in good shape. Oh yeah, and the trailing arms, you can tell, have been redone pretty recently as well. The, the, um, the trailing arms, you know, if the trailing arms aren't right, you can give it gas and uh, the car darts to the right. You let off the gas and then the car goes back to the left. So that's a pretty good sign that you've got a problem with the trailing arms, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, well anyway, uh, we'll just point out quickly in the video, uh, does anybody have a flashlight? You do, good. And Rick, uh, our cameraman, will take us around. Is it better with can, or without the flashlight? Can you see that bonding strip in the camera? Right up here, that, see it there goes yep. forward and backward. That's what they call a bonding strip, where this bottom panel was uh, formed, and then the upper body panel, and that's where they were glued together and then put in with the bonding strip. And they're the same on both sides, and uh, that's what we look for, front, rear, bonding strips. But anyway, that gives you a good idea of the, uh, some information about what to look for in a Corvette. And Thank, go ahead, uh, uh, As Greg was referring to earlier, the bones of the car, the, the frame, if you stick your finger in the frame, a lot of cars you'll feel some scaly, what now, and the, the metal is thin. This one is nice and thick, so you can tell that it's never been exposed to any kind of elements that would rust the frame from the inside out. That's so true. And of course, if you see that uh, there's welding going this way on the frame, that's a problem because that's where a Corvette was cut in half and maybe put together. So we, we don't have those offered at Biovet. We only offer Corvettes that's got good frames that uh, safe. That's what's important. Okay, well, thank you for watching the video. Hope uh, the information will be helpful in uh, your uh, hunt for a Corvette. Thank you.